we're going to learn about how a minimum wage affects both the market for labor and the level of employment that individual employers in a market will decide upon. Of course, everybody's heard of minimum wages. These are often very controversial topics of discussion and debate at both the city government and state and national government level. Whether a country or a state or a city should impose a minimum wage in labor markets is a hotly contested question. So let's start with the clear definition of what a minimum wage is. A minimum wage is simply a price floor in the labor market. You've probably learned earlier on in your course that a price floor is a price control meant to help suppliers. In the case of a labor market, the suppliers of labor are households who are supplying their labor to different types of markets. So the purpose of a minimum wage is to help households by guaranteeing them a wage that allows them to maintain a certain standard of living. For a minimum wage to be effective, it must be set above the equilibrium wage rate determined by the labor market. So in order to understand how a minimum wage affects a labor market, we're going to go down to our graph here. On the left, we have the market for a particular type of labor. The assumption here is that this is a labor market for a less skilled and therefore a lower paying type of labor, such as fast food workers or retail workers, those whose wages aren't already going to be at a living wage rate because of the relatively low skills needed in order to provide labor to this market. So the demand for labor, of course, as we've learned, is downward sloping, and it represents the marginal revenue product the revenue attributable to additional workers as they are hired in the industry. The supply of labor is upward sloping because households are willing to supply more of a particular type of labor as the wage rate increases. The equilibrium wage rate in a market is therefore determined by the intersection of supply and demand. So we've got our equilibrium quantity of labor and we've got our equilibrium wage rate. We also learned in earlier lessons that an individual employer's demand for labor represents the revenues that additional workers earn the firm and is downward sloping. So the individual employer's demand represents marginal revenue product. That's the revenue earned by an additional worker hired. And the profit maximizing level of employment for an individual employer is going to be determined by the intersection of what we call the marginal resource cost, which in a competitive labor market is simply the wage rate that the firm can pay in order to hire additional workers. Now there are many firms, dozens or even hundreds of firms competing for all the workers in this labor market. Therefore, each firm is what we call a wage taker. We're going to start in our graph over on the left. Let's assume that the government in this city decides to set a minimum wage above the wage rate equilibrium, which we'll assume is $12 an hour. In order to help households, to help workers, the government sets a minimum wage of $16 per hour. That's above the equilibrium of 12. And what is established is a price floor. And this is our wage floor. the minimum wage. We'll call that WM for minimum wage. The first thing to notice is that at higher wages, fewer workers are going to be demanded by firms. The reason for this is that if they were to continue to employ QLE, the original equilibrium, then the marginal revenue product is now lower than the wage rate that has to be paid in order to hire those workers. So the equilibrium quantity is no longer a desirable quantity because the wage rate is higher than the marginal revenue product. It costs firms more to hire QLE workers than that number of workers actually earn firms in this market. Therefore, the quantity of workers demanded by firms, by employers, is going to decrease to some lower level of employment. So I'll call this QD, the quantity demanded following the imposition of a minimum wage. So the law of demand says that as the wage rate rises, the number of workers that firms will wish to employ decreases because it becomes less profitable to employ workers at the new higher wage rate. What happens in terms of the quantity supplied then? Wage rates determine the quantity of labor in a particular market. 
if the wage rate rises, more workers are going to want to be employed in this industry. If this is fast food workers, then more households will choose to go seek employment in the fast food market now that the wage rate is higher. Instead of $12, the wage rate has risen to $16 per hour. It's simply a more desirable market to be employed in. So the number of workers wishing to be employed in this market increases. So we have a quantity supplied that's greater than the quantity demanded. Chances are you've already studied price controls in this class. As you learned in your study of price controls, a price floor creates a surplus in the market for a particular good. In this case, a minimum wage, which is simply a price floor in the labor market, creates, we don't call it a surplus now, we call this unemployment. An effective price floor set above the equilibrium wage rate will create unemployment in a labor market. Now, does this mean that all minimum wages are bad? Not necessarily. Chances are that many employers are already paying something higher than any minimum wage that might be considered or imposed. So minimum wages are sometimes unbinding or ineffective. Therefore, only those that were already paying the lowest wage would be affected. This is not a macroeconomic type of unemployment that we're talking about here. This is rather unemployment in the particular labor market that's being affected by the price floor or by the minimum wage. So one thing we can show on a graph on the left is the inefficiency resulting from this minimum wage. There is a loss of total welfare in the labor market due to the fact that employers all have to pay higher wages and workers find it harder to get a job. So the triangle I highlighted in yellow here represents the deadweight loss or the welfare loss resulting from the imposition of a minimum wage in this labor market. So what's going to happen for the individual employer following the imposition of the minimum wage? Well, as we learned earlier on, Individual employers are price takers, or wage takers as it may be. So the minimum wage, we'll call this WM, increases the marginal resource cost of employing workers for the individual employer. So the marginal resource cost increases to MRC1. And we forgot to add our equilibrium level of employment before the minimum wage. That would have been here. The individual firm would hire this many workers, QLE. But in order to continue employing those number of workers, the marginal resource cost is now greater than, so the MRC is greater than the MRP. It costs firms more to employ the QLE worker than that worker earned the firm in terms of revenues. Therefore, the rational thing for individual employers to do is reduce the number of workers they hire to the new profit maximizing level. That would be Q. L E one in this case. And the reason that is the profit maximizing level is because the marginal resource cost equals the marginal revenue product. The minimum wage has led individual firms to lay off workers. So this represents reduced employment here. Reduced employment. So the individual employers in this market have reduced the number of workers that they wish to hire in order to maintain their profit maximization. And overall, there is an increase in unemployment in the labor market, as we see on the left. So there are some considerations we can make here when determining whether minimum wages are desirable or not. But first, let's go back to our notes and outline what we have just illustrated as far as the effect on labor markets and on individual employers. In the market as a whole, firms will wish to hire fewer workers, but more workers will wish to seek employment in the markets affected by a minimum wage. This leads to a disequilibrium in the labor market, where the quantity supplied of labor is greater than the quantity demanded for labor. In other words, there is unemployment in the affected markets. How about for the individual employers? As we've shown, the minimum wage increases the marginal resource cost of hiring workers. Therefore, individual firms must decrease the number of workers that they employ in order to maintain their profit maximizing level of employment. All right, so, so far it's not looking too good for the minimum wage argument. Minimum wages, as their opponents claim, can create disequilibrium in labor markets, which is another way of saying a surplus of labor or unemployment. On the other hand, minimum wages are oftentimes set at a level that is not much higher than or even below the equilibrium wage rate in the labor market. Therefore, not all minimum wages are bad. They might serve as protection for workers that otherwise might be exploited by employers looking to cut their costs at the expense of workers.
Another consideration that I did not go into in this lesson is the wage elasticity of demand for labor. If I were to change the steepness of this demand for labor curve and make demand steeper or more inelastic, then the impact on the quantity of workers demanded would be less severe and the level of unemployment resulting from a minimum wage would be smaller. So what kind of markets tend to have more inelastic demand for labor? Go back and watch my video on the monopolist's demand for labor. In markets in which firms have price-making power, that's in the product market, they tend to have more inelastic demand for labor. Therefore, a minimum wage in a monopoly market in which a single seller sells all the output or has great price-making power in the product market, a minimum wage will have less of an impact on the quantity demanded for labor. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about the impact of a minimum wage in a monopsonistic labor market. That's a labor market in which a single firm or a handful of firms have wage-making power. We're going to see a very different result when we analyze the effect of minimum wages in monopsonistic markets. Here we go. One step at a time, don't be